This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we were talking about implementation. And in the implementation, we talked that once the implementation is completed, we will be working on process stabilization. After the process stabilization is completed, there is something called improvement. Now, when we normally do the implementation, we will be taking the requirement at high level. And once you complete the configuration based on the requirement, you will be performing the testing, training and all. And then you will finally go live on the system, which means you will hand over the system to the client. They will start using the system on a daily basis. When they start to use the system on a daily basis, that is where they will be executing. That is where they will be actually recording different different business processes different different business scenarios now all these processes all these scenarios is not possible to test during your unity testing during your uat testing so what client will pick they will pick some sample uh, transactions or sample scenarios they will execute or they will perform them in the uat session but once we actually go live in the production system when they execute different different scenarios on a daily basis they may be coming across a certain new scenarios, new requirement, which may not work as expected. So when these kinds of kind of things are coming, what they will do, they will raise a ticket to the consultant. What consultant will do, he will look at what kind of entry or what kind of report you are executing. Accordingly, he will verify. Okay, for this entry to be passed, there is additional configuration to be maintained. Let's say, for simple example, they want to process advanced to vendor they want to pass an advanced to vendor but they don't find a specific reason for the advance let's say this is advanced in terms of retention they're talking about advance with a term called retention when we talk about retention you will retain certain amount of the money which is liable to make payment to the vendor let's say i would say retention is 10 percent now on the invoice that I receive, I need to initiate the payment of 90%. The 10% I will retain with different amount or with a different due date. Now for this, your vendor has realized, okay, I don't want to uh, pass this as an invoice or as this an open item. Instead, I want to treat this as a special GL transaction or something which I will be releasing later on. So this may not be configured or this may not be discussed during the initial stage. But now when the situation has come, your client or your user will user will raise it to you. Based on this, you are going to check your configuration. Okay, for this retention 10%, I don't find any special gel indicator to handle it differently. Or we have not even created any payment term to split your invoice with 90% and 10%. Now what you are going to do, you are going to maintain this missing configuration. This is the basic configuration, which is missing business process or missing business functionality these are the small day-to-day -day functionalities which are quite common in every project sometimes what will happen on your major business processes certain things may not work as expected let's say you're working on payment screens but when you're making the payment to a vendor when you're receiving the payment from any customer you find that the way that the payments are happening is not the way that you want it Practically, when you are doing the UAT, you may be testing one or two payments. But when you are actually working on SAP after going live, you may be making multiple payments. You find that this is taking a lot of time. I am not able to have hold or track on my payments, which I am doing. I want to improve this process. I want to put different control points, checkpoints in this. For this, your client may tell that, okay, these points we want to address on priority as this is creating a problem with us where we do not have hold on what is happening in the system now in this cases what you will do you will understand the initial process that was discussed and then you will see what they are actually doing currently whatever they are doing in ground currently is this the same process that we discussed at the time of your implementation is this the same thing that we tested during our UOT if it is the same thing then you may have to fine-tune it if it is something different you are going to call it as change request like this is there is a change in the process which requires additional effort for which you need to do all the configuration changes completely 
you will tell that this changes in this current business process will require one week time or one month time two weeks time so these points what you are going to do you are going to understand based on the regular usage of the system only especially during our UOT sessions UT sessions training session we will be working with the sample business cases sample business scenarios and when it comes to improvement this improvement is something that is to be initiated from consultant side as a consultant you are looking at the business process the transactions reports that your client is carrying out on a daily basis based on this considering your expertise on sap considering your experience on sap you need to propose okay currently you are doing these activities this activity can be further improved by adding additional functionalities like this or we can make a new report so that the manual intervention that you are having on this can be eliminated or there is another process another functionality in sap which will which will be a best fit for these kind of interests clear huh? yes yeah. all right okay now let's talk about the reporting requirement reporting requirement of a company when we talk about a reporting requirement of a company we need to understand what are the reports that they are going to generate on a daily basis and on a monthly basis for this first thing that we need to understand is what is the company that we are working for we need to understand what is the company that we are working for accordingly we will understand what is the reporting requirement how we are going to match or how we are going to meet these reports on the standard system let's say i am talking about a company which i will say uh, let's take any simple company which does the trading business i will say any motor vehicle company will take where you will find bikes and cars any company which produces bike and car bmw okay i'll take bmw now i when i say bmw we need to understand what is this company whenever you start your configuration on sap fico always keep in your mind whatever the company name that you are taking point number one you need to understand what is this company if you are taking any actual company the first point second point if you are taking any company of your own sometimes when we practice we will put any four digit company name and we start continuing the configuration when you are doing in that approach make sure you have an imaginary business process of that company to understand what we are doing practically now if i talk about bmw next thing that i need to talk about is products next thing that i need to talk about is product what is the product of bmw when i am talking about product i am not talking about the material i am talking about the product class if i say bmw i can simply say i will get cars in bmw cars is one of the product in bmw let's say bike is another product in bmw service is another product in bmw and i will also have another thing called spares is this correct right bmw is selling cars bmw is selling bikes bmw is also selling the service because it's a paid service when you go for servicing it's a different product for them similarly spare parts now here if this is the business process of bmw at what level they want to generate their profitability or at what level they want to look at their profitability reports or the generic reporting to manage or to understand their business process or business progress now the mandatory reports that are generated first thing is at your financial statements 
because at the end you are going to put a full stop when you generate your financial statements so at what level they want to look at the financial statement now when i talk about financial statement i am very clearly talking about trial balance pnl and then balance sheet in short tb pnl balance sheet let me put tb i'll not put full forms because in the real environment when you're working with any client or any user everybody will use a shortcut only tb pnl balance sheet now when you're generating a trial balance do you want to look at the trial balance as a whole which means at company level if yes then you need to generate the trial balance at company level when you're generating the trial balance at company level you're going to get the total picture of the financial transactions total sales total purchases total expenses total asset total liability and all similarly when you're generating pnl at company level you are going to have the complete profit of an organization similarly complete balance sheet at company level i am going to get what is my overall assets what is my overall liabilities this is one requirement according to every accounting principle this is mandatory because you are representing one company one legal entity you have registered your business with one name as bmw let's say if you are working in india you may say bmw india if you are working in us you may be saying bmw us at india level if you are generating the financial statement according to the indian accounting standards similarly if you are generating the accounting or the financials in us you may be generating the financial statements in us maybe according to us gap in that point number 1 you are generating the total financial statement which means tb pnl balance sheet at company level this is level level 1 requirement level 2 i may i may want at product level this is common requirement when we talk about segmental reporting everybody would have heard something called segmental reporting segmental reporting is again one of the requirements from your ifrs accounting principle or from various accounting standards when you talk about it according to my business according to my bmw i am not only dealing with i am not only dealing with cars within bmw i am classifying my business process into four partitions or four verticals according to me the car business process is different bike business process is different servicing is different space is different which means i want to know it is my requirement to find out whether i am making profits or losses by doing cars business similarly whether i am making profits or losses by doing bike business servicing space for me to capture the profitability at each product class level i need to create something called profit center this is common requirement in most of the organizations which use sap they will create their product class as the profit center when we talk about product class as profit center this car is a profit center for me bike is a profit center for me service is a profit center for me spare is a profit center for me so here i am going to generate at the company level and at the product level now here i put company is equal to company code company level is equal to company code similarly product product level is equal to profit center these two are mandatory requirements in most of the clients that you work with who are using or who are working on sap there may be certain clients who may not be using profit centers but you should always remember you should always think about reporting including profit center okay so one level is your company the other level is your product company is nothing but company code level company code level you will get overall profit what is your overall business profit you will be able to generate at company code level at individual product level which means you may be having different verticals in your business process i may say cars is a different segment for me bike is a different segment 
my services space is a different segment accordingly i can decide at what level i want to look at my pnl and balance sheet at that level i will be creating a profit center remember at whatever the sub level apart from your company you want to look at your tb pnl balance sheet straight away we will go and create a profit center for it whether it is a product whether it is a location whether it is a branch whether it is a division whatever it is at whatever the level you want to look at your tb pnl balance sheet apart from your company at the overall you don't want to look at it because that is anyways a mandatory requirement apart from company code at whatever the level you want to look at your tb pnl balance sheet this level is called as profit center in sap this level is called as profit center you will be deciding what is your profit center or how many profit centers you are going to create based on your financial reporting requirement let's say according to this what i am going to do i am going to create one company code called bmw i am going to create four profit centers called cars bikes services spares now within this it is again possible for me to sub classify it all depends on my reporting requirement let's say i want to know within cars i may be having different things let's say if i take cars within cars i may be having hatchbacks i may be having sedans i may be having suvs right i may be having suvs now my requirement is again to further look at the profitability at what is my hatchback car what is my sedan what is my suv if this is my requirement what i will do i will be creating my profit centers instead of creating as a car i will be creating hatchback as a profit center sedan as a profit center suv is another profit center similarly in bike also if i want to have similar classifications accordingly i will split my bikes let's say sports bike or the normal bike premium bike or above 200 cc bike below 200 cc bike requirement can be anything now these requirements will be clearly given to us by the client this is not something that we will decide this is something our client will tell us at this level we are currently generating our reports or our target our intention is to make sure that we will be able to find out the profitability we will be able to generate our financials at these levels now it is our uh, go ahead we, is it only one chart of account or we have to create a multiple chart of accounts for the product wise it's a single chart of account okay suppose if, uh, if you're doing same if suppose that i will add for, uh, in the upcoming ones okay okay i'll so come much. to that point okay 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 Ajay, thank you so our client will tell at what level they want to generate their financial statement based on that you will decide how you are going to decide your org structure let's say how many company codes you require how many profit centers you require whether you need any segment or not you are going to decide based on the client reporting requirement now tomorrow if somebody is asking you how do you create a profit center your answer cannot be generic your answer has to be logical because you are going to create a profit center based on the reporting requirement which reporting requirement financial reporting requirement when you're talking about financial reporting requirement we are representing financial statement when we talk about financial statement we are talking about trial balance pnl balance sheet at what level they want to look at this at that level you are going to freeze your profit center so at this level your profit center can be a location your profit center can be a product your profit center can be a branch your profit center can be anything which will be decided by your client at this level we want to look at the profitability and similarly let's say cars you have like this in bike you may be deciding like below 200 cc above 200 cc uh, premium bikes or sports bike whatsoever in the services you may say after sale service or normal service because after sale you have to provide free servicing for one year within warranty or after warranty how you are going to classify within your services similarly spares how you are going to classify your spares is there any further classification in spare or spares you don't want any further classification i am fine with overall spares so this level or this reporting requirement every client will have 
this is the existing business process of every organization which they will tell us during the process during the project implementation or even if you are working on any business process or any client for any organization these are predefined things which may be documented somewhere which may not be documented somewhere because these are all the sensitive information or confidential information about every company which will not be disclosed to disclosed to all the employees to all the staffs in the organization because no company wants their employees to know how they are calculating their profits so this is a sensitive or confidential information so it is not so easy that i can get into the system find out all these points right now if i say that this is what is my product my product i am treating as profit center but i want to group my profit centers if you want to group your profit centers you will be using something called segment now hatchback sedan suv end of the day everything is a car so i am going to create a segment called car within this car segment i am going to have hatchback as a separate profit center sedan as a separate profit center suv as a separate profit center similarly bike i'll create as create as another segment within bike i will be creating 200 cc bike as one profit center above 200 cc as another profit center according to the my client requirement but you need to understand at what level you are going to look at your financial statement that will be your profit center group of profit center is nothing but your segment segment is nothing but group of profit centers first you need to identify what are your profit centers once you are able to identify the profit center identification of a segment is very simple ajay what because is the business area actually there is one more concept called business area business area is also used for generating financial statements but we used to use business area in the older versions like in ecc and all but now we don't use business area for financial statements business areas we will create only for the valuation area purpose like whatever the plant that you are creating for every plant we will be creating a business area but apart from that we will not be generating financial statements like tb pnl balance sheet at business area level currently we don't use it it was used earlier in the ecc versions but now in s4 hana and all we normally do not go with business area reporting profit center and segment these two only we will be using okay Thank you. So once sir, you decide, uh, business, sorry, uh, sir, business area and uh, plant is uh, can we uh, assign the same code uh, or different yes. code? No, no. Normally, when you create same. business area, you will be creating plant code as business area. If your plant code is one two three four, you will be creating a business area as one two three four. This one two three four business area will be assigned to one two three four plant by the MM consultant. mm consultant okay. okay okay thank you sir yeah okay sir. now once we decide what is our profitability or at what level you are going to generate financial statements like company code level product level and then grouping of products we call it as segment segment is nothing but grouping of product in short it's a group of profit center three profit centers i call it as one segment once we decide this then your next target is to understand now here we understood three points one is company code two is profit center three is segment these three points we understood after this what we need to understand is the accounting principles next thing we need to understand after completing this company code profit center segment because you understood now you are generating you are operating or you are running a company at this company level you need to find out overall company profit for that you are going to generate financial statement at company code level this point we understood second point your requirement is to understand how your business process is doing for this you need to prepare financial statement at individual product class level or business vertical or business class level whatever the way you are classifying according to your business process this one we are going to create as a profit center level and group of your profit centers we are assuming it as segment 
after this after this what we are going to do this first three points we have listed assuming tb pnl balance sheet based on tb pnl balance sheet we have listed at company code level profit center level segment level now the next question is whenever you want to prepare any financial statement like tb pnl balance sheet on what basis you are creating tb on what basis you are creating pnl balance sheet because this is accounting accounting is monitored by a law there are certain principles there are certain laws which will monitor your accounting based on which your financials will have to be prepared otherwise your financials cannot be audited your financials cannot be reviewed approved for this there is a something called accounting principle there is something called accounting principle these accounting principles must be followed by every organization to prepare their reports when we talk about accounting principle you need to keep certain points in your mind point number 1 in which country our company is operating let's say my company is operating in india let's say my company is operating in us my company is operating in singapore my company is also operating in dubai my company is also operating in australia now point number 2 is your company operating in one country or multiple countries this is another question that you need to put your answer is one country your answer can be multiple countries also your answer can be one country your answer can be multiple countries also now for the first point in which country our company is operating if you are operating in india your accounting will have to be performed in india or you have to submit your financial statements or financial reports to the indian local authorities or to the indian accounting authorities because in the local officials within the india according to the indian companies act or according to indian accounting standards you need to prepare the financials and submit for the validation or for the auditing or verification now in india which accounting principle we will use ifrs in india ias yes, indian accounting is your... ias IAS. in india you will be using ias which is your indian in accounting standards accounting standards similarly us in us i cannot follow indian accounting standards it is not allowed in us okay. i must follow us cap similarly in singapore i will say singapore accounting standards in dubai i will say dubai accounting standards in australia i will say australian accounting standard correct yes. which means every country will have their local accounting standards which are country specific according to that country law there will be one policy procedure which must be adopted followed by each and every organization which is doing business in that particular country this is mandatory this is mandatory any company who is operating in india cannot bypass this if i am operating in india i am not doing my accounting as per indian accounting standards my company financials will not be validated my my company financials will not be audited approved if this is not audited and approved banks will not give, grant me any loans you will find a lot of difficulties your company will go into you know bankrupt or different terms for it because your financials are not audited not approved according to the indian accounting standards as we know at the end of every year every organization financials must be audited and approved correct at the end of every year 
every company's financials must be audited and audited and approved is this correct yes sir this is to this is yes, to make sir. sure your accounting is your accounting is performed based on the rules and regulations which are provided by the respective accounting principle <clears throat> for this to happen first thing that you need to understand for which country you are working for or in which country your client is operating what is the local accounting principle for it now all this information you will receive from your client but the point is we need to keep all these points in our mind right from the beginning otherwise later on adding these points will lead to unwanted so many confusions which will be a very tricky situation for us to have a clarity this is point number one point number two is your company operating in one country or multiple countries when you say if you take certain companies you will find that company only in india or only in us this company may not be operating in any other countries there are a lot of companies who will operate within india or within us within the same country there are certain companies which will operate in multiple countries if you see bmw i will see bmw products or bmw doing business in india i can see the bmw products bmw doing business in australia some other countries also like this you will have to understand whether your company is doing business only in one country or multiple countries in short company who is doing business only in one country we call it as local company company who is doing business in multiple countries we call it as global company they are present globally in multiple countries or they are present locally only in one country if you are using one country you will be having one accounting principle is followed if you are operating in one country you will be following one accounting principle if you are following or if you are operating in multiple countries more than one accounting principle is followed if you are operating in multiple countries more than one accounting principle is followed now we understood accounting principle each for each country there is a specific accounting principle now if you are operating in one country one accounting principle is followed this is i would say country specific accounting principle you will follow here now when you are using here you will be using two accounting principle one is country specific the other one is common one is your country specific accounting principle the other one we need to follow is common accounting principle now what is country specific accounting principle what is common accounting principle we will understand next next point number 3 reporting types what are the reporting types that we are following you will have something called local reporting you will have something called group reporting okay we need to understand what is local reporting what is group reporting local reporting as per local accounting principle local reporting is always prepared based on the local accounting principle local accounting principle is nothing but based on the country in which you are operating if you are operating in india local reporting will be local accounting principle indian accounting standard if you are operating in us your local reporting will be based on the local accounting principle for us local accounting principle will be us cap similarly based on your country in which you are operating that particular country's accounting principle will become local accounting principle this local accounting principle is used for preparing local reporting next one is your group reporting group reporting is as per common 
accounting principle group reporting is based on common accounting principle when we talk about common accounting principle majoritily we will be talking about ifrs every company will follow the common accounting principle called ifrs local accounting principle is based on country from country to country it will differ and for every country for every country there is one common accounting standard or common accounting principle called ifrs now here you will be following ifrs so here i will write ias or us cap if i am if my country is in india i will be using indian accounting standards if my company is in us i will be using us cap similarly if i am operating in multiple countries i am operating in india i am operating in us similarly i am operating in multiple other countries in this situation i will be using my local accounting principle to meet the local reporting requirement i will be using ifrs accounting principle to meet the group reporting requirement two reporting requirements you need to remember local reporting group reporting for local reporting it is always as per the country specific accounting standard for group reporting it is standard by default ifrs next one report reporting currencies in which currency we are going to perform our reporting as we know you have two reportings i'll put two reports here for local report this is always as per countries official okay i i missed i missed that reporting type so uh, can you explain one more time local reporting is used based on the country if your company is operating in us you will have to follow the us accounting principle in us whatever the company who is operating they must prepare their financials they must submit the reporting according to us cap principle whatever the rules and regulations guidelines are there as per us cap these must be followed to submit their reports in us officials so that is your local accounting principle or local reporting group reporting is nothing but if your company is operating along with us in some other countries then you have to follow a common accounting principle in all the countries wherever you are operating because in every country your accounting principle is keep on changing in india you are following indian accounting standards in us you are following us cap so the indian accounting standard us account us accounting standards may not be same there may be slight changes variations when it comes to group reporting you want to do a consolidation or for group reporting you need to have common approach in every country the accounting approach must be common this common so, accounting approach we will be adopting ifrs so if the company is itself is in us and company code uh, is also in us in that case uh, one company in us another company is india and one is in uk but the main company is in us in that case the group reporting will be on the uh, us according to us standard is that right no no group reporting it is again decided at the beginning when you are setting up the company or the information at that time you will decide it so this is I decided at the beginning and followed across all the companies there is something called corporate corporate policies or you know group accounting policies mm -hmm. And what will be the currency code in that case? Currency they will that be followed. That is what. That is what I am writing now. Okay. Okay. That's what I am writing now. Reporting currencies. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So when we talk about reporting currencies, you have two reports: local reporting and group reporting. Local reporting is always made as per country's official currency. If my company code is operating in India, INR is the official currency for India. if my company code is operating in us us dollar is official currency for dollar now the local reporting is fixed always local reporting is always fixed based on the country whatever the country it is based on that country that country's accounting standards will become your accounting principle that country's official currency will become your local currency 
similarly when you talk about group reporting now here this is as per common accounting principle this is again based on the common accounting principle according to common accounting principle which is ifrs company will have a standard policy which is decided at the beginning which currency to be followed for the group reporting in short group reporting is nothing but consolidation when i am talking about consolidation consolidation is nothing but adding all company code figures adding all company code figures is nothing but consolidation if my company codes are operated in two different countries in india i am getting inr number in us i am getting dollar number i cannot total inr number and dollar number because inr and us dollar are not same currencies if you have different currencies you cannot total it for me to total i need to have the same currency to have this total at the group reporting level we need to make sure in all your company codes group currency is common fixed this is based on your accounting principle you will tell according to ifrs every report must be prepared based on dollar or any other currency majoritily this is dollar majoritily for all the companies for all the clients dollar is used as group currency now if i take these two points let me put another point here reporting requirement of bmw based on the above points if i put this now i'll put three points here i'll put bmw india i will put bmw us i'll put bmw singapore i'll put bmw dubai i'll put bmw australia these are the companies that i am putting if i put this in india what i will be doing i'll have something called i'll say this is company code this i will say local reporting this i will say group reporting every company will have two reportings one is local reporting the other one is group reporting now based on this so what i will be doing if i am operating in india i must follow ias indian accounting standards for my local reporting any report that i generate any report that i submit in india must be inr if i am submitting my reports in india to the income tax authorities or to the companies act to the auditors and all they must require my reports to be prepared to be submitted in inr currency if i try to submit my reports apart from inr any other currency is this acceptable in india or not can i submit my reports in dollar in india no 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 it is not accepted it is not acceptable because i must follow indian accounting standards and all my reports whatever i submit whatever i prepare officially they must be in the country's local currency which is inr so for bmw india your local reporting will be indian accounting standard inr and the group reporting will be ifrs dollar group reporting will be ifrs dollar similarly if i talk about us i will say in us i must prepare based on us cap and then i need to follow dollars if i try to submit my reports in inr in us it is not acceptable because in us you must follow the local currency for the reporting you must follow the local accounting rules and regulations which is governed by us cap similarly for us also you need group reporting for group reporting you must follow the same ifrs dollar if you are talking about singapore well, let's say you will be following singapore accounting standards and you must prepare your reporting in 
Singapore dollar. Similarly, for Singapore also, group reporting will be common IFRS dollars. For Dubai, I may say Dubai accounting standards, I must follow in Dubai currency, which is AED. For Dubai also, your group reporting will remain constant. Similarly, for Australia, this is AE. For Australia, this is your Australian accounting standards, whatever it is. And this will be prepared in Australian dollar. Group reporting will become common. IFRS dollar. Now, if you look at this, your local reporting is keep on changing. The moment you are moving to a different country, your accounting principle is changing, your currency is changing, which means your local reporting is dependent on the country in which you are operating. If you are operating in India, your local reporting will become Indian accounting standard followed by INR currency. If you are operating in dollar, if you are operating in US, US gap followed by dollar. If you are operating in Singapore, Singapore accounting standard, whatever it is, followed by Singapore dollar. Likewise, any country that you take of any organization, take that country's local accounting principle followed by that country's official currency. These two combinations will form your local reporting requirement. This is mandatory for every organization irrespective of the application that you are using. This is not SAP specific. This is normal accounting standard specific. Sir, any logic behind the uh, you have selected all the group reporting into IFRS uh, USD dollar, but if you no. uh, if the group company is situated in Singapore, then also IFRS USD dollar group reporting currency. It is up to the company which one they decide. It depends on the company to company, but most commonly used currency is dollar because all the currencies cannot be converted into Singapore dollar. Officially, for all the countries, you will be trading, you will be converting to dollar. Oh, Normally, we call it as dollar as a uh, globally tradable currency. We use dollar for all the group reporting. But there is no okay. such rule. You can have any currency as, you, as your group currency. But whatever you decide as the group currency must be common for all your companies. You cannot change it. Okay, got it. Hey, Ajay, uh, concerning that particular point, I think there's a trick. There's a trick, tricky uh, situation there now. Let's let's talk about the, the situation of the US. It seems to be a problem around the world. So now the local currency here would be uh, US dollar. And then if you want to use that one when you're considering international companies, uh, sometimes they also want to use the US dollar. So in that case, how do you solve it? Oh, I, I didn't get your question clearly. Please repeat it again. Right. So uh, when it comes to the U.S. Uh, uh, local standards, you talk about GAAP. Right. Sometimes when you also talk about a company that is operating out of the U.S., you also talk about either GAAP or the uh, international uh, reporting standards. But then for the local standard, when it comes to currencies, you use the U.S. dollar. And then when you're also talking about IFRS, you also use the dollar. Is that a possibility? Yes, because your company is not only operating in US, your company is also there in different other countries. For this, I'll put some transaction figures. There your question will get clarified why we are using the dollar and IFRS here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is the basic example, the basic logic that we need to understand local reporting and group reporting. Now, why we have to do this local reporting, group reporting? I will take simply writing everything not at the left but make sure you don't get confused when you refer this excel sheet i started writing from here instead of left
Now, I don't want you to see the above part. Now, I want to see the transactions or the transaction. Now, here what I will write, I'll write certain transactions. Let's say sales and I'll also write my purchases and I'll write my operating expenses and I'll put my operating income. Similarly, I should put this in different way. Okay, fine. Let me put this copy. What I'm doing is right. Yes. Sales, this is fine. <clears throat> How I should represent this to make it simple. Okay, I'll remove this from here. I'll put sales purchases and then I'll put assets and then I'll put liabilities. Now, in the company code, first what I'll put is BMW India. Okay, for BMW India, what I'll put sales is. Not this thing. How do I represent it? Sir. What I'm planning to do is I wanted to put all these numbers one by one Sir. at company yeah. code level. Sir, can you take the two uh, two boxes for one company and you can give give her one for local reporting and one for group reporting? Where you mean to say? Sir, you can uh, take two boxes, like uh, two rows for sales. In one row, you can represent uh, to match this one company, two rows. You can capture this in one local company and one group company. Okay. Otherwise... Uh, for uh, each country, you can club two columns, and under below that, you can give local reporting and the group reporting. Transpose the countries in the row. Okay, so what I'll do. So what do you mean to say? Yeah, now for uh, each country, maybe we can add two columns. If we can break that into two, like if you can shift, uh, shift or or else you can, if you can in the same field, if you can split two columns. Yeah. Yeah. Now below that, 
for each country maybe yes one is for uh, local land to merge this yeah merge this one two three four okay so here i'll put maybe you can add one more one more uh, uh, row so that it will not clashes with the uh, i'll put the local and then and group reporting i don't know if that is your requirement <laughs> yeah 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 correct well, I, i just want to make sure that we can see this and then we can easily understand so that the others will not get into confusion what i'll do let me color this separately i'll not use this i'll use maybe local currency i'll take green everywhere and group currency i'll take yellow everywhere now for india local currency will be inr for group currency this will be dollar so dollar will be fixed one for usa this will be dollar this will be dollar for singapore this is singapore dollar this will be dollar dubai this will be aed this will be dollar australia this will be aud this will be dollar <clears throat> okay now here what i will do i will take sales figure sales in india what i will say i'll say this is 1000 sales in india similarly i will take in us 1200 sales in singapore i will take 900 sales and in dubai i will take 800 sales in australia i will take 600 sales now for purchases i will take 700 here i am just writing imaginary figures 900 here 750 here let me take round figures only 600 here 500 here 400 here operating expenses i will take 100 here 80 here 50 here 60 here and then 30 here income i'll take 30 here 20 here 10 here 10 here 10 here assets i will say 
<clears throat> some imaginary figures I am taking. Liability also I will take the same thing. Now these are the numbers that I took. Now if you look at this, if you look at this, based on this you are able to understand your local reporting requirement. When you say local reporting requirement, if I am looking at BMW India, I know the sales in India, sales in India for BMW is 1000. Similarly, purchases is 700, operating expenses 100. Now this reporting, whatever I am looking at in green is called as my local reporting. Local reporting is always country specific. I am not going to compare my local reporting in India with local reporting in US or Singapore because this is based on different accounting principle. This is based on different accounting principle. But if I am looking at BMW from the organization point of view, if I am looking at BMW from the organization point of view, whether I am operating in one country or in this situation, we are operating in five different countries. As a owner of BMW, I am not interested in knowing what is my profit in India, what is my profit in Singapore, what is my profit in US. Instead, I wanted to know what is my overall profit. I simply want to know what is my profit for this month. When I am asking what is my profit for this month, I mean the total profit of BMW or am I specifically asking about BMW India Singapore? In general, what will be the requirement? Total profit or country specific profit? Total profit. So we normally represent total profit. What is the total profit of me? You should always think from the company point of view. When you see it from company point of view, if you are the owner of BMW, you want to know what is your overall profit. Only then you will be able to identify whether your business is performing good or not. Now for that to happen, I cannot say my total sales. I'll say total. When I put total, my total is applicable only for the group reporting. When I'm talking about total, my total is applicable only for the group reporting. Now, can I say my total sales is 1000, 1200, 900, 800, 600? Can I say 4500 as my total sale? Is that valid? No, buddy. This is not valid because these five are not same currencies. This is INR, this is dollar, this is Singapore, this is AED, this is AUD. I cannot club these two to commit the total sale. So this is wrong. Then how do I do to commit to commit a total sale figure which is valid? I must follow another accounting principle which will provide the same logic, which will provide the same standard, same rule across all my company codes, across all the countries. For which what we are doing, we are using group reporting. This group reporting is based on IFRS. Whatever the sales you recorded in India under group reporting, this is based on IFRS in dollars. Now how you will bring dollars for every currency to convert one currency to other currency, you have something called exchange rate. Correct? You have something called exchange rates. You are going to maintain exchange rate from one currency to the other currency. In short, dollar is your target currency. Your source currency has got INR, USD, Singapore dollar, AED, AUD. From every, from every source currency to the target currency of dollar, you are going to update exchange rate. Based on the exchange rate, you are going to make sure that the currency is automatically converted to derive at the dollar. What I will do, let's say, for INR. I'll write here. I'm just taking the imaginary figures. I would say for INR, the exchange rate I will take as 80. For dollar, since it is the dollar, I'll take this as 1. Singapore dollar, let's take some 40. This I will take something like 20. This I will take something like 15. I don't compare with the original rates. I'm just taking the random rates. 
now what i will do i will calculate these figures based on the local currency so dollar what system will do these exchange rates are automatically updated on a monthly basis by the users so what user will do whenever they are recording any transaction in the local currency the dollar is automatically converted by the system by multiplying with this by multiplying with this now here a point that you need to look at when you're talking about exchange rate you need to consider two points lc2 fc fc2 lc now whatever the currency that you know here is this called a local currency or group currency foreign currency local currency what we know is local currency what we need is foreign currency so our conversion is local currency to foreign currency if your conversion is based on local currency to foreign currency different logic to be applied if your conversion is from foreign currency to local currency different logic to be applied now here whatever the exchange rate that you are aware of is normally when somebody is talking about inr to dollar or dollar to inr everybody will talk about 80 or somewhere around 78 82 nobody will take 0.02 or 1.5 correct when somebody talks about dollar rate everybody talks about it's 80 today yes or no yes sir yes, correct sir. Yes, now my requirement is that i know my inr is 1000 if i have to calculate my dollar should i multiply 1000 with 80 or divide 1000 with 80 divide 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 so we need we need to divide now how you will come to know whether you need to divide or multiply only when you have a clarity from which currency to which currency you are converting which means what is your local currency what is your group currency if you look at two currencies not sufficient you have to understand what are these two currencies what is the exchange rate you have whether this is your local currency to foreign currency rate or foreign currency to local currency rate majoritily we will be talking about foreign currency to local currency rate so here what i need to do i need to take this local currency divide by this it this logic i will explain this will be 12.5 so what i will do i'll this is fixed i'll put this now i'll copy paste the formula when i copy paste the formula automatically every amount is divided by 80 this is my dollar number here when it comes to my dollar since it is the dollar what i am going to do i'll take this divide by this one since this is fixed i'll freeze this number this is fixed my dollar is arrived for singapore dollar also it is the same this divided by this since the fixed exchange rate i'll freeze this column this is what i got from aud same thing i'll take this number divide by this rate i'll freeze this one copy i'll paste this similarly for aud this divide by this i'll freeze this number copy this i'll put this here now i got these figures arrived now if i have to do a total i am not supposed to count the total of local currency i am supposed to count local of group currency for me to find out my total my total sales i need to count group currency or local currency group currency group currency group i'll take currency. this total plus this total plus this total plus this plus this this gives me my dollar similarly if i put the same formula here this is what i am getting so i'll remove the decimals this is what i am getting now if i do a sum for this if i do a sum for this i don't do sum for this so this is my total if i wanted to tell what is my total sale i am telling my total sale is 
because I am doing a total for this. Let me put this also in same color so that we will not get confused. All these numbers you'll have to represent when you're working on SAP. When you're posting any document, you should not have any confusions on this. Especially when you're working for any global clients, any big clients, your numbers, reports, everything will look like this. If you're working for small clients, small, small companies, this much level is not required. But if you know at this level, whatever you see it, you will be able to accommodate, adjust, understand easily. Now this total, we are representing the group currency because you're talking about consolidation. Your group currency is this number. Now, when I am, when I'm talking about group currency, I am talking about consolidation. When I'm talking about consolidation, I am consolidating data from multiple company codes, company code from India, company code from US, Singapore, Dubai, Australia. If I take the total sale in everything, this is what is my total sales. If somebody is asking me, what is the total sales of BMW for last month? My answer will be $1,315. Because this is the common. Everywhere it is the US, everywhere it is the US dollar based on the IFRS accounting principle. Now, the way you posted the entry, the way you calculated, everything will be common because accounting principle is common. Correct? Huh? Since the accounting principle is common, the way you treated, the way you posted, the way you adjusted anything will be on the common point. But when it comes to local, in INR, there may be certain adjustments. If you especially take taxes, now any sale, any purchase that you do is a subject to tax. Agree? Whenever yes, you sir. talk about sale, whenever you talk about purchase, your sale and purchase is a subject to tax. Now, the way the taxes are treated in India is different. The way taxes are treated in US is different. The way taxes are treated in Singapore is different. When your country is changing, the sales figure, the actual revenue that you're projecting is also changing because of the tax. Tax is creating an impact on your sales. At the same time, you're receivable, payable. On India, what you're going to do, you're going to follow all the Indian sales. But when it comes to group reporting, you're going to follow based on the IFRS. Any adjustments, any deviations that you find, you are going to pass the accounting principle specific adjustments to make sure everything is aligned with your accounting principle called IFRS or the respective accounting principle or any accounting standard. According to this, your consolidation is always based on group currency. Your consolidation is always based on group currency, which is dependent on or which is as per your common accounting principle, which is IFRS in most of the projects. Any question on this table? These two reportings? No. It was clear, right? Yes. Sir, uh, what about you have uh, shown here, what is the calculation here? Can you uh, show in system also, right? In future upcoming season? Yes. Every entry will be posted with the same criteria. Each and every document that we post in system, will follow the same criteria. That is why I'm showing all this at the beginning so that when we post the entry, I don't want anyone to get any confusions. Okay. So it is about the FX rates, Ajay. Cor correct. Yeah. Sir, so this topic falls under a uh, foreign exchange currency valuation, right, sir? When, this is exchange... not about, we, we are not supposed to see this from a topic point of view. Any document, any accounting entry that you post in SAP must contain value in local currency must contain value in group currency. So this is represented by Indian accounting standard. This is represented by IFRS without which whatever the entry you post is not allowed. Okay. So group currency is maintained under a client code, right? Sir? And local correct. That I'll tell right? once we start correct you're right once i start the configuration related explanation that is where i will write where you maintain what currency how your exchange rates are coming how currency is getting converted all these points i will detailedly list out in the excel sheet all these points i will list out before we log into sap okay sure sure okay okay, okay. so these points first we need to understand once we are clear with these points 
it is easy for us to understand what we are doing on SAP, what entries we are posting, how reports are executed. Because these are not related to any configuration. Any topic that you configure, any topic that you post, your accounting entry must contain this information because this is straight away connected. This is straight away related to your reporting. Okay, now. Okay, so far any questions? Is this clear? Before I go further, this table I want you to have a clarity that why we posted these numbers like this local currency group currency where we consolidated which number we took for consolidation. Any question till here you can ask so that the remaining points I will explain in the tomorrow's session. Can you hear me sir? Yeah. I just want to find out this is currency. Your voice is very low people. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, I just want to find out. I mean, uh, this uh, currency which we are converting. So for the reporting purpose, would that be like a, a, a static figure like for every single day or when is reporting is like monthly. So when we uh, calculating for the month uh, uh, transactions and all this stuff. So how does that count it? Is it like on the daily rate or on the end of the month on the 31st when we counting? What is the rate on that day? Yeah, we will be converting this based on the MER rate, which is called as month and exchange rate. Okay, we will be preparing these financial reports on a monthly basis. Let's say you, if you are preparing this report for July month, so you will come to know the July closing rate on 31st July, correct? Huh? Yes. Closing rate for July and average rate for July, we will come to know once the July 31st the exchange closing hours are closed and you are going to close your month not on 31st July your month will be officially closed financially August first week is that right yes so before we close the month for the July we will know what is the month end exchange rate we will update this month end exchange rate in the system and there are two points before you generate the financial statement two points we will consider which is your Forex valuation and a translation. We will perform Forex valuation, Forex translation. These are part of your month end activities. Based on this, all the numbers at the end of the month will be realigned according to the month end exchange rate. This is because when you submit any financial statement to anybody, let's say I am telling. This is the PNL or this is the trial balance for the month of July. Now you are showing me this is INR figure. This is dollar figure. I cannot simply total all the figures because there may be certain transactions posted with a different exchange rate. Agree. I was going to ask the same question that uh, during the whole month when we are making a yeah. payment or when we are receiving a payment, the rate will be the different, right? Every single day. Right. Correct. Yeah. So for this, when you do a total, it will not match. So for that, what we will do at the end of the month, you will perform currency valuations, currency translation. According to this, whatever the month end exchange rate you mentioned, let's say if you mentioned 80. If you mention month end exchange rate as 80 and this exchange rate you have to submit or you have to mention in your financial statement, like what is the exchange rate that you have taken? If I check or you check ex closing rate for dollar based on INR for the month of July is 80. Now any number if I take, if I find out the logic, I must get 80 as my conversion rate, correct? If I'm getting one where 80, another point, if I'm getting 81.79, my data is inconsistent. I have, I have not calculated my dollars based on a fixed logic. So this is not allowed. For this, you have something called currency valuation, currency translation in SAP, which will be executed during the month end which will realign all your figures into the common exchange rate so that even if you take the local currency to find out the group currency exchange rate you will arrive at 80 either way if you do foreign currency to local local to foreign your exchange rate will remain at 80 because these realignments adjustments system will make sure when you execute currency valuation currency translation but sir, uh, if you if you are going for the transactions for during the month, 
so uh, honestly i'm not very much clear on this point how this uh, like end of the month how we can calculate that during this month what was our sales purchase or operating expense or like all these points how we can clarify by end of the month that how much it was i mean that's this point i'm i'm not getting properly because whatever the valuation translation do, you are doing system is going to identify the difference based on the original rate and the month end rate yes and these differences it will pass one entry one accounting entry is posted and this entry will be reversed on the next month automatically today it will pass and tomorrow it will reverse which means 31st july this entry will be posted 1st august this will be auto reversed and your original entry is unchanged this when i pass the entries there i will show practically so you meant to say like uh, realized gains and unrealized gains is it correct so when sorry, i read the accounting sorry, I, did not, I did not understand the point but as you say that on the practically when you show me that that maybe that time it will be a little bit clear yes, to me there you will at understand the moment, yeah at the moment it's just completely gone out of the mind all right this is only to make sure that we keep these points in our mind right from the beginning so that when we pass the entries and all we will be aligned with how exactly entries are posted by any global client in the similar way we will remember things and tomorrow when you see anywhere you will not get into confusion but at the this is the first time we are looking at it maybe the table level and then the multiple currencies and all the same confusion we will get even when we are in a project for the first time even after 3 4 months 6 months of practice the same situation will come which we are getting at the beginning itself okay but so all these you, figures can you explain me can you explain me this lc to fc and fc to lc one more time please let's say i have inr and i have dollar and i am saying dollar rate usd rate is 80 now in general if you take these two currencies these two currencies we will call it as currency pair these two currencies we will call it as currency pair for this currency pair you you normally don't ask what is the inr rate you always ask what is the dollar rate am i correct yes so when you say this everybody will tell 80 rupees or 79 81 75 this is what everybody will tell nobody will tell 0.15 or 1.2 nobody will tell when you talk about inr dollar exchange rate am i correct yes sir now point number 1 I'll say scenario one is this. Now I'll take scenario number two. Here I'll put dollar. Here I'll put INR. Assuming that I have. Hundred INR, and here I have hundred dollar. In one case I am putting hundred INR, in the other case I am putting hundred dollar. Now I know that my exchange rate is eighty. If I want to convert my dollar to INR, now scenario number two. I have I have dollar. Now before I apply this logic, first thing that I need to have a clarity: what is my LC? what is my fc correct huh? without knowing this the way you adopt or the way you apply the calculation is wrong if i say that my local currency is inr if i say my local currency is inr my foreign currency will be dollar is this point clear if i say my yes. local currency is inr my group yes. currency or my foreign currency will be dollar now the dollar rate i am talking about is 80 now this 80 you need to understand is this 80 1 usd is equal to 80 dollar 
or 1 INR is equal to here it will be INR. <clears throat> so this 80 representing which statement? USD yeah, this is what this statement is representing now is this is this representing let me put another point LC to FC or FC to LC which statement this is representing FC to LC foreign currency to local currency or local yes. currency to foreign currency no, the foreign first scenario is a local foreign currency to local currency this is representing foreign currency to local currency because we assume that our local currency is INR our foreign currency is dollar our local currency is INR foreign currency is dollar and we have listed dollar rate is IT when you list out a dollar rate is IT, you need to be very specific. Are we representing one dollar is equal to 80 INR or one INR is equal to 80 dollar? So this you will be able to clarify only when you know what is local currency, what is foreign currency. With this, you understood one dollar is equal to 80 INR. According to this, you need to classify is this conversion local currency to foreign currency or foreign currency to local currency. This is called as foreign currency to local currency. Now let me put one more point FC to LC is equal to multiply and LC to FC is equal to divided by. Okay, if you are converting from foreign currency to local currency, you need to multiply the exchange rate. If you are converting local currency to foreign currency, you need to divide the exchange rate. So in this case, if my dollar to INR, dollar to INR is foreign currency to local currency. Foreign currency to local currency, what I need to do? Multiply. Yes. So here what I will do? I will multiply $100 with 80. I am getting 8000 here. Is this clear? How I got 8000 here? Yeah. Now on the other side, this is my INR to dollar, INR to dollar is my local currency to foreign currency. The exchange rate that I know is 80 because everywhere people will tell you 80 only. Nobody will tell 1 divided by 80. So here what I will do is equal to 100 divided by 80. This is 1.25. Is this correct? Clear? Got it? Yeah. So I'll show these things practically on SAP also. Even in SAP, you have something called exchange rate simulator. Whatever the rate you put, the whatever the calculation you did, you can do these calculations on SAP without posting any document. Okay, if you open a T code called EWCT, this is your exchange rate simulator transaction in SAP. If you open this T code, if you put if you update the if you update the exchange rate. If you put local currency as 100 INR, it will automatically show you 1.25 as dollar. If you put 100 dollar, it will automatically show 8000. The similar calculations, similar exchange rate, I will update on the Excel sheet once again. And I'll maintain the exchange rates on SAP. I will show you how our manual calculations are working, how SAP calculation is working. So that you will not have any confusion with respect to this. These are mandatory. These are mandatory because for every document that you post in the system, each and every document will be converted from local currency to foreign currency or from foreign currency to local currency, depending on the transaction that you are posting currencies that are involved. Clear? Yes, sir. sir can, can you go profit center uh, role level? product yeah segment and yeah here uh, uh, 
can you little bit up okay yes just me yeah so here uh, you are talking about products products in the sense service also you are maintaining right so Correct. in the bill in the below product level is equal to profit center right you are writing sir so Correct. i can call it as service level also sir service level equal to profit center yes okay because and when uh, i write product here i have listed four car is a product bike is another product service is another product spare is another product mm -hmm. yeah whatever i understood i am just uh, clarifying so here you maintain the four products and uh, clubbing into grouping of products equal to segment you are calling right sir right so uh, we have in sap like uh, profit center group then profit center like that right, right sir correct so here is where is the profit center group car is a group profit center oh. group is normally used for your internal reporting purpose okay so when i talk about profit center group within cars i have how many four yes now when i talk about profit center group let's say my requirement is to check or compare uh, hatchback and sedan alone separately and sedan and suv separately so here i have two combinations hatchback and suv one combination hatchback and sedan another combination i can also have additional combination like sedan and suv right so these points i will be creating as profit center groups but my segment is all together so i cannot create multiple segment this is also additional requirement that you may have correct uh, i am not getting what you are written here hp let's SU. say i have listed four type of categories in car three type of hatchback sedan and suv mm -hmm. i may want to club hatchback and suv alone possible or not yes possible i want to club hatchback hatchback and sedan and sedan and suv for various Vice reporting versa. reasons okay all right i may have different requirement for any purpose maybe management wants to compare these two give me the combination figure with this two combination tell me the figure now at this level you are going to create profit center group you can okay. create n number of profit center groups based on your requirement but when you are talking about segment this is based on a logic so i am calling all my cars all my car types into a car segment when i create a car segment i cannot create multiple segments for that purpose you are going to use profit center group functionality okay in in the sense segment in the sense like uh, uh, line of line of activity business. something is there right yeah yeah right. line of business so, line of business and you can okay. call it as also and, your business vertical like that Mm -hmm. so uh, we are taking in the bmw so bmw is operating multiple countries like so we have seen in the multiple times in the individual level a back region emea region something two three three to two regions we they are saying right sir correct so uh, uh, where we are maintaining the regions level so uh, we are we have to set up those regions or something where whatever you are creating as a segment this is segment is connected in the profit center mm. okay if you decide the profit center with regions let's say i have created cars bikes services and all now i want to club as a segment all the cars in the middle east region as middle east segment okay whatever okay. the country you, you you mean to say regions equal to segments we can maintain right but only one logic you need to phrase you cannot have multiple logics because this segment is connected in your profit center 
one profit center will represent one segment only okay so before you freeze what is your profit center what is your segment we need to freeze what is our financial reporting requirement at what level you want to generate your financials based on that you are going to decide what will be your profit center what will be the segment because initially if you are not freezing this later on it is not possible for us to change the way we want okay okay so later on if you want you have to depend on these points like profit center group cost center groups can be created at any given point of time okay okay so when we pass the entries you will have a clarity because that is where i can show you on the system if you create like this these changes are not possible this is where you can generate these reports mm -hmm. and uh, i have small example so so uh, there is a industry service industry okay uh, training training institution level so they are they are conducting online service and offline service and uh, some whatever is one to one okay there is a three types of services we can call these are services right sir correct and uh, under these services we we can maintain uh, how we can say multiple operations will do right right if you are providing training yes you will be providing training on sap and there you can classify sap online sap offline sap one to one is that you mean to say yeah, yeah. now here what we need to do first if you are running that a training institute if you are running that a training business so we need to no, have a clarity. not only sap not only sap no, yeah, multiple I'm, courses yeah so there at what level how you want to run this because when you are generating this profitability you need to look at overall if you want to look at what is my profit on sap now in that you may have another requirement called i want to know how much profit i am making for sap fico sap mm sap st sap abap so these kind of things we cannot create multiple profit centers because sap is a product category under sap you have fico mm sd and all these are your individual material that you are selling to the customer correct correct to the end customer what you are selling not is is not sap it is your sap mm sap sd sap fico sap mm online sap mm uh, classroom sap mm one to one these are your material master at the end product level whatever the profit you want to find out you will be using something called profitability analysis or copa you heard something called copa right yeah at this level you are going to refer the copa because you cannot straight away distribute your cost at product level at the end product level let's say you are paying salary can you classify that my salary uh, for sap fico this much sap mm this much no right no let's say you are paying electricity bill you are paying different things you cannot classify or you cannot categorize this cost into the different product level because here we are talking about the external reporting point of view in short the operating profit point of view not the product level profit when i say operating i must be in a position to generate my sales purchases overall cost and then what is my net profit net loss when we talk about the product level profit i am going to consider what is my sale value what is my cost for it what is the profit that i am making from each course so at this level we will be de de defining copa reports but when we talk about the profit center level report we should always consider trial balance pnl balance sheet for sap fico i cannot generate a trial balance correct yeah i can generate a trial balance for sap overall because i can classify on sap this is what is my investment this is what uh, my cost you got my point uh, but, uh, uh, uh small doubt so whatever you were saying mm sd and fico these are all courses so we can call it as services sir it's material masters this material master okay it, it is not including the this level products level no. right it, this is classification of it if you break down your product this is what you will get 
mm st and all you are calling it as your product of sap okay uh, what now about with, to, uh, uh, online and uh, offline one to one these are all services correct this you can call it as a segment i can say oh. offline is one segment online is one segment when i am talking about this i need to again classify my profit center because i need to create sap online as one profit center sap offline as one profit center and then uh, sap one to one as one profit center along with sap you may be teaching oracle you may be teaching python you may be teaching c plus java and all yes because in every course you have this combination so whatever the combination you feel is right based on that combination whichever fits your reporting requirement most closely at that level you are going to freeze what will be the profit center what will be the segment because you can use any combination but we need to decide which one is more ideal more uh, suitable for your business requirement Oh, yeah. yeah. So that means profit center can be a location, can be a product, can be a service. Yes, it can be anything. It it depends on your reporting requirement. At what level you are planning to look at your profitability? In short, your TBPNL balance sheet. At that level, you can create one profit center. You can create a ten profit center also. It is your requirement, right? You have that requirement to look at. your tb pnl balance sheet at that level no option you need to create a profit center it is purely dependent on our business requirement in short the reporting requirement so these points are clearly mentioned to us by the client at this level we want to generate the report accordingly you will decide what is profit center what is your segment because multiple permutations and combinations will be validated and you will also see at the transaction level from the reporting level are these uh, combinations are valid sorry uh, sorry interrupt sir so if <coughs> if suppose client doesn't know the any uh, relating to this uh, uh, maybe whatever we are using terminology uh, relating to how we can set up the profit center this one no they will know this everybody will know this because uh, at this level every company will be currently running their reporting it's not that they will introduce when they get into sap this is something that is already there in their existing business process also very rare that somebody will use this functionality in sap because when you use any financial reporting any monthly reporting everybody will prepare the various reports manually correct for different purposes yes yes so uh, this th there is a there is a example i am just taking there is a one company in us uh, maintaining cash basis okay so now they are converting uh, now they are coming to sap so uh, they know everything segment and profit center can i expect yes because they may not be aware of the sap terminology from the reporting point of view they are very clear what is their expectation they tell that this is our business these are our products we are dealing with cars whatever the products related to their business process they will tell at this level we want to look at the report at this level we want to look at the report because when you are talking about any business process any requirement at the beginning you will be talking about what are the masters that are involved in it what transactions you are going to prepare and what reports you are expecting from us when you okay. freeze any requirement these three points you will be bringing into the picture there you are going to have a clear understanding if there is something which is not discussed at the beginning later on they are telling that may be possible may not be possible because only when you know the full requirement accordingly you will propose a solution accordingly you will set up the system correct huh? yeah initially these points were not discussed you have already set up the system later on these changes these requirements are coming then you will upfront it tell based on the current system setup this requirement cannot be met so there what are the alternative options okay okay thanks
okay all right then so let's close for today we will continue in the next session sir tomorrow what will be the timing sir 8 pm right sir we can session yes tomorrow it will be 8 pm ist okay 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 yeah, our regular session continuation will be on monday 9 pm tomorrow and day after we will be connecting for the weekend batch 8 pm session the similar points i will be repeating so those who wants to revise it again can attend tomorrow at 8 pm day after tomorrow at 8 pm so that you will understand the similar points again with the different examples once again so that you will have more clarity even if you have any doubts confusions can be clarified okay sir i All have right. uh, one current issue uh, i i will discuss with tomorrow class session okay sir hmm. yeah okay fine okay sir. all right then so we'll connect tomorrow at the 8 pm good night good night sir thank you sir good night